This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about solubility and complex ion equilibria. In today's video, we will talk about precipitation. Before I start my video, let me remind you of the outline of this chapter where I will be talking about different topics. So please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now for precipitation, how do I know that when I mix two solutions, if a precipitation will happen or not, assuming that the chemical reaction will produce a product that is poorly soluble in water, so it can precipitate. Now let's look at the example of calcium fluoride that can be obtained from combining a solution of calcium 2 plus and a solution of a fluoride F minus. Now, in order to determine whether a precipitate will form or not, we need to look at Q. Q is called the reaction quotient, and that's equal to the product of initial concentrations. It's written the same way as we write the expression of the KSP. The only difference between Q and KSP is that for the reaction quotient, Q, we use the initial concentrations. So now to calculate Q, I will be using the initial concentrations of the calcium, Ca2+, and the F-, minus the fluoride. Now once I calculate Q, I compare it to Ksp. In the first example here, this is when Q is less than Ksp. And this means that the reaction will shift to the right, and therefore no precipitation will form. Now, if the reaction is shifting to the right, to the right side, this means the solution of the solid, and therefore the solid will not form, the solid will dissolve. Now, if I have Q is equal to K, this means that this reaction is at equilibrium. At the same time, the solid can form, but also the solid can dissolve. And if Q is greater than Ksp, now in this case, the reaction will shift to the left of making more of the solid, and this is when I have precipitation. So, if you are mixing two solutions, and you want to know ahead of time if a precipitation will form or not, you can simply calculate the reaction quotient Q and compare it to the Ksp. How can we use this now? If we take a look on the following example, now here it says, if we mix 100 milliliter of 0.05 molar of lead nitrate with 200 milliliter of 0.1 molar of sodium iodide, given that the Ksp for lead iodide is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 8, what will be the final concentrations of ions in the solution? So as you can see in here, I have 100 milliliter of 0.05 molar lead nitrate, and I have 200 milliliter of 0.1 molar sodium iodide. If I mix these two solutions together, before any reaction happens, the concentration of the ions present in the solution can be calculated using the dilution expression which means m1 v1 it's equal to m2 v2 where m1 v1 are the molarity and the volume in the initial solution and m2 v2 are the molarity and the volume after mixing so using this rule we can calculate the concentration or the initial concentration of each ion present in the solution so we can calculate the concentration of lead, concentration of iodide, the nitrate, and sodium. Now, since the Ksp is given for lead iodide, and we know, based on the solubility rules, that sodium nitrate will not precipitate because it's highly soluble in water, so the spectator ions in this case are the nitrate and the sodium. So the concentration of these ions will remain unchanged. So the reaction now will happen between lead and iodide. And for that, to check whether a precipitation will happen or not, 
I need to find the reaction coefficient. Why this is important? Because if a precipitation doesn't happen, this means the concentration of ions will not change in the solution. However, if a precipitation will happen, the concentration of lead and the concentration of I- minus will change and therefore I need to look for this change. So finding the reaction quotient, we find that Q is equal to 7.43 times 10 to the power minus 5, which means Q is greater than Ksp. If Q is greater than Ksp, then lead and iodide will form a lead iodide precipitate, and this is going to be observed at the bottom of my flask. So now, what happened is that the concentration of I- minus and the concentration of lead have changed. How can we find this change? First, we look at the stoichiometry calculation. Now, we know that initially we had 5 millimole of lead, if we calculate this from the concentration and the volume, and 20 millimole of iodide. Now from the balanced equation, we know that every one mole of lead will react with two moles of iodide. Now after reaction, all five millimoles of lead will react, will be consumed, and two times five millimole of iodide will be consumed, and therefore the remaining is 10 millimole. This tells me that lead is the limiting reagent and I- minus is the excess reagent. Now, we know that the limiting reagent it gets completely consumed in the reaction. However, some of the solid that formed will dissolve to give a few ions of lead in the solution. So now the concentration of lead before any dissolution of the solid is going to be zero. However, the concentration of iodide before any dissolution of the solid is going to be 3.33 times 10 to the power minus 2 molar. So taking into consideration these concentrations, we can look now at the equilibrium calculations, where at the initial state, I had zero let and 3.33 times 10 to the power minus 2 molar I minus. Now, after certain amount S of lead iodide dissolves, it will form 2S of iodide and 1S of lead. At equilibrium, I will have 3.33 times 10 to the power minus 2 molar plus 2S of the iodide and S molar of lead. Now, to calculate S, I can simply replace the concentrations by their values and solve for S, and I will find that S is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 5 molar. Now, this S is going to be the concentration of the remaining lead in the solution. So let's take a look now at the concentrations of ions before reaction and after reaction. First, if we take a look on the concentration of the spectator ions, we can see that the concentrations remained unchanged. However, for lead, since lead is the limiting reactant and most of it was consumed and the only remaining amount of lead is coming from the dissolution of the precipitate, this, the concentration after reaction, is equal to the solubility that was found to be 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 5 molar. Now, iodide is the excess reagent and therefore the remaining amount after reaction is equal to 3.33 times 10 to the power minus 2 molar. So whenever you are working on a similar question, you have to keep in mind that the concentration of spectator ions in the solution will not change. The concentration of the limiting reactant will be calculated from the solubility equilibrium of the precipitate and this is similar to any 
other solubility questions that you can work on. And the concentration of the excess reagent will be equal to the remaining amount of the excess reagent. It's not going to change after the dissolution of the precipitate since usually the dissolution is very small compared to the remaining amount. I hope this video is helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.